Hey friends, welcome into my channel. Today we're going to be talking about a couple of these little sets that I tracked down while I was at Walgreens. I was getting some photos picked up and of course you got to take a little stroll through the makeup aisle. And I saw at the end of one of the aisles a whole display of CoverGirl sets. And it's really kind of rare to see certain things packaged together in sets from some of these bigger drugstore brands. And I noticed that they all contain a certain shade of CoverGirl Outlast, a single eyeshadow, and and a blush, a Cheekers blush. And you know how I feel about those. I really like those actually. Also the CoverGirl Outlast. I mean, my complaint for a while had been I had a really hard time settling in on a good like everyday kind of natural, casual type of shade. And I have come up with a couple that I like. I can list and link those below, but I realized that they're kind of focusing all on nude and natural shades with these collections. In fact, they're all called Color Me Nude. And then they're all based around a certain skin tone and the corresponding lip color that's going to work for that. So for example, I have medium cool here and I also picked up the universal nude and I thought I want to try what they've got here for a couple of different looks. So this video will be shot in two different days and um, just see how it comes together. I know I individually like most of what's in here. I mean, I really enjoy Cheekers Blush. I think CoverGirl Outlast lip colors are some of the most hardcore yet comfortable staying power products for lips. The eyeshadows, that may be a little, you know, hit and miss, but I'm here to try it. And I noticed that they had other skin tone options. They had like a deeper one. They had maybe a medium warm. I took a picture, but there are at least five or six different like clusters of products. And then they had either, you know, a deeper blush, a softer blush, maybe a deeper or lighter eyeshadow shade. But I'm really excited about the tones that I ended up with in the Outlast colors because I think they're gonna be just super wearable and nice. Um, I played, in fact, with this medium cool one yesterday and I'm really into it. So it's gonna be pretty simple. Today I'm gonna try on the medium cool set and tomorrow I'll be back to try on the other set. I've got on foundation, concealer, powder, and also bronzer. And now we're gonna go to the blush. And the blush you get in the medium cool set is called Classic Pink. And it is just a super standard pink blush. There doesn't appear to be any real shimmer in it. I'm just tapping my e.l.f. blush brush in here, which is my favorite blush brush to use. Get a little bit of this going on the apple of the cheeks. Something I like about Cheekers blushes is you're not going to go too far, but you really are going to see them. They are going to show up on the skin. And both of the shades that were given in these kits were ones that I didn't already have. So I think that's actually really fresh and pretty and it'll be interesting to see how that coordinates with the lip too. The blush that's in the um, Universal kit is actually lighter, or it, it appears to be lighter and just a little more neutral than this one, not quite so pink. Now on top of that, I think I will bring in a little highlight. I'm gonna use my Luminizer Squad here palette. It is actually Luminizer Squad. It's all put into one word. They're sneaky there at the bottom. They're trying to entertain us at every turn, I feel. Uh, I'm gonna use the Emma Luminizer shade, which is the cool, very brightening one. Ooh, love this. Just kind of buff that in there on the top of the cheek. Okay, really happy with that. I'm wearing my Glamouflage foundation, by the way, and just can't get enough of the coverage. I'm gonna put on a little setting spray. This is the new Fix Plus from MAC that I'm experimenting with. It's got the flower petals on it, and it is the Cherry Blossom Fix Plus. I'm really, really liking that so far. Next up, we're gonna move on to the eyes. And I think with this shade Mink, I am going to try to just use this as a one shadow look today. Um, the shade that comes in my Universal kit, um, we'll see with that. It's definitely a lot lighter. And as I was swatching it, I feel like, I don't know, I may really want to combine some other shadows with it. We'll see how that goes. But for today, I'm gonna put on some Milani eyeshadow primer here. Just stab that over the lids, get it all blended in. I'm pretty sure I had this shade called Mink a long, long time ago, so we're going to use the sponge tip, and I'm going to kind of just press this on the lid. It's a nice neutral shade with a little shimmer. It looks a little taupey in the compact, but I feel like maybe just a hint more goldeniness is coming through on the lid. I don't know. It's very soft. It's not unpigmented because it is showing up. It's just kind of like really matching in with my skin tone, if you know what I mean. 
And these may not have really been put in here intended to be one shadow looks, but you know, you try to accomplish it where you can, right? I'm gonna see if I can take a little bit of this shade with my E25 and just see what happens if I get a little into my crease. It is gonna look a hair deeper than what's on the lid. Just cause you're not applying it as full on, you're not getting all the shimmer. So that's kind of nice. It's nude, y'all. <laughs> what can we say? It's gonna be natural looking. But I don't know if you can tell, there is a, a bit more sheen on my lid where I applied it really concentrated and packed on. And now here in the crease, you're getting a little bit of contrast there. Okay, I'll just blend over the outside. What I really want to do when I'm done testing a couple of these other eyeshadow palettes I'm working with, I want to take my Once palette and do like a week of one shadow looks. I don't know if that really would appeal to that many people or what, because one shadow looks are so easy and somewhat self-explanatory, but at the same time, I feel like seeing them done, it kind of proves to you like, oh, I can take this palette in a really, really simple direction when I'm in a rush, you know? There are no doubt five or more one shadow options in there I think so I would kind of like to prove that to you and do it in a video but let me know your feedback on that all I'm gonna do to finish off this eye look is put in um, a little bit of light liner in my lower inner rim that's my wet n wild ultimate brow highlight and then I'm gonna curl my lashes put on a coat of mascara and then we'll come back and see how the look turns out there's our very basic just simple as can be eye look and now we're gonna move on to the medium cool lip it's number 920 and you may find I think I have seen some shades labeled with these different names like medium cool or medium warm whatever in a full cover girl display when I first laid eyes on some of those that would have been maybe a couple months ago and nothing was specifically categorized just a heads up you might not have to buy this whole set but here we go this is just a creamy color I see no shimmer in my tube here some cover girl outlast shades actually do have some shimmer but we'll just pop this on and this is going on like a liquid lip color that is gonna set and once it does set, we'll put the balm on top. The fascinating thing about CoverGirl Outlast is that even with that moisturizing balm on top, that doesn't break down the lip color, so it's still gonna stay on. In fact, it'll stay on better if you can keep your lips refreshed with that balm throughout the day, and it will not transfer off. So now we're gonna let that get totally dry. I'm trying to help it along a little bit. So it takes a couple minutes, but now we are set. Um, it should feel dry on your lips when a CoverGirl Outlast has set. And something I really like about these products is that they do not change color when they dry down. I do not have a drastically darker lip than when I first applied, okay? So then we're gonna use the balm that comes with it. And this is something you know you can easily carry around in your purse throughout the day keep your lips hydrated. Once this goes on, um, the feeling you should end up having is more of like a weightless feel, like, okay, I feel like I just have lip balm on. I don't really feel the heaviness of the product. You shouldn't have that dry or tight feel on your lips anymore. And, and whenever you start to feel that throughout the day, the balm should come back on. And to look up close, the lips look hydrated. There's that look of a little moisture there, which I really like. So what do we think about the medium cool look? I kind of enjoy the way the lip and cheek coordinate there. I think the eye is just so super simple. It's one of those things you can't really go wrong with it. You just kind of acknowledge, yeah, that's that's gonna be a very subtle look. It is what it is. Some people may really like that for day to day. Some people may want more, in which case you can layer in some of your own shadows and other palettes. But I really do like um, taking that cool pink blush that came in here. And then I put a very cool kind of icy highlight on top. And I really like the finished effect. I think that works so well. So thank you guys for watching this look. And tomorrow I'll be back to try out the other box. All right, team, new day, new color collection. Today we're gonna be playing with the Universal Nude set. So it all centers around the Universal Nude um, Outlast lip color, and then we have the blush and the single eyeshadow. So yay, this is fun. I really enjoyed playing with yesterday's combo. Um, the lip color wore really nicely, as long as I kept the top coat, the balm on it. Because I noticed later in the afternoon as I was slacking on my top coating, it was starting to feel a little dry and even little parts of it seemed to be flaking off just a little bit. But my 
my mom not even knowing I was trying to do something special with my look like when she first saw me she's like oh your skin looks nice or your face looks nice and I thought it was so interesting that this was the collection I had on and it was just a very simple look you know I didn't go wild with the eyes the lip wasn't especially bold either but it did all come together and I think that's the whole intent of these kits is to come together and create a workable look but we're gonna see how this universal one works we're gonna be using this blush in natural shimmer which seems to be a little less pronounced than the pink one we used yesterday um, does it actually have much shimmer in it I feel like I've used a blush in the past from covergirl called natural twinkle and I know that had some shimmer this has like a, a little bit of a sheen um, and it seems a little deeper as I swatch it than it even appears to be here in the palette so We'll pick some of that up on the old e.l.f. blush brush and see how we do here. I mean, I think it's kind of obvious that this shade on deep, rich skin tones is not going to be the best option. It's just not an intense enough blush. And there's a different color collection if you are of a deeper skin tone, but I think I like that shade. I feel like I'm going to be using that more. It kind of reminds me of the look you come away with when you use one of their sable, you know, soft sable blushes. That more like neutral instant cheekbones look. Like you're still picking up a little gentle pink there, but it's more muted than yesterday's. Cheekers blushes, y'all. Don't overlook them. Love it. Okay, now we're going to move on to eyes. And I think what I'm actually going to do is just use both of these as eyeshadow. I'm going to go into the crease with my mauve -y little soft neutrally blush. And then we're going to pop um, the shade Bedazzled Biscotti. Gosh, I remember that phrase from high school, I think. I'll use that as kind of my lid pop. But first, I will use my Milani eyeshadow primer. I guess that Bedazzled Biscotti, I mean, it's a very light looking shade. And I suppose that's in the universal kit because maybe anybody can use just a light highlight type eyeshadow color, I guess. You'll recall yesterday we just kind of made a one shadow look out of the eyeshadow because Mink is a little bit deeper, like it's just barely able to pull that off. Um, but I think the Bedazzled Biscotti is just too light. So we're going to go to this blush pick up a little. I mean, it's definitely, if you just kind of put your head in eyeshadow mode and you look at this shade, this would totally be a crease color I would use, you know, on and off. If I saw this in a palette, like, which I think I have seen it in a lot of palettes, I think, is that prayer in my once palette? Was this in that lime crime palette I was just using? Yeah, and that works just fine in my crease. It's only going to get like so deep. It's not like you can build it to some really dramatic place here, but just getting it in there, blending it around. Then I will blend over the edges and we'll bring in the eyeshadow. As I turn the shade, I think you can see it does have some sparkle in it. It's kind of fine, but it is definitely there. There's a lot of like tap off when you tap off the excess fallout, whatever you want to call that, a lot of tap off. Um, but you'll notice that like it picks up quite a bit on your brush actually. Okay, so we're using that a little bit under the brow and then we'll pick up our applicator to get a more intense application here on the lid. It's kind of one of these things that, yeah, all right, it's, it's workable, but I'm not in love. Like it's doing the job for a nice light little shade here on the lid, but I'm not really liking just the sporadic little silvery fine glitter. I hope it sticks. I hope the Milani primer is kind of grabbing that. But I mean, it, it is pigmented enough. And then I'll just pick up some of this with a flat brush as I like to do, you know, create just a little more harmony between the lid and crease by putting some of your crease shade on the outer part of the lid. Although this is really, really subtle, it is there. <laughs> Wow, how simple does it get? I do want to put on a highlighter. The Mary Luminizer right up here from my little quad. Mmm, pretty pretty. Really sets off the cheek. My blush definitely hung on till day's end yesterday, and that really impressed me. Like, I was just watching it because, you know, I had such a soft eye look. Nothing was very intense at all with the look, so I was just kind of keeping an eye on things and seeing, like, you know, if this can't last, like, what's the point? But it really did. Now I'm going to kind of finish the look in very much the same way I finished yesterday's. I'm going to, um, yeah, there is some glitter that kind of flew around there. I'm going to do a light liner in the lower inner rim, 
just mascara on top and then we'll finish with the lip. I really don't want to dramatically like throw in a lot of different things like a certain eyeliner, like a really thick different look where that's concerned because I want you to just be able to compare the color stories sort of between these two sets. So we'll do that and I'll be back for lips. Here's the thrilling conclusion of this super exciting eye look. It does have a nice kind of um, coordination, monochromatic look with the cheek. I feel like the glow on the cheek is sort of reflected in the lightness on the lid and then you've got that little bit of contoured look to the crease area. So let's move on and see how the lip mixes in with all this. This is the shade labeled Universal Nude. It is much deeper in comparison to yesterday's shade and it appears to be just a creamy color without any shimmer. So let's just pop this on. Wow, um, you talk about wearable everyday color. I need just a little more on this one part of the lip because I had to sheer it out a little. Really, really nice shade, um, especially with the lighter eye. You know, it's just a little deeper, but nobody would point to it and say, wow, there's a really dark lip color. Like, it's still very natural, and I see how it kind of falls under the nude umbrella, but wow, I would really feel comfortable in that on a daily basis. And while this is drying, I just want to check. This is the shade 621 Natural Blush, and this was a color that I really came to enjoy just from the regular lineup of CoverGirl Outlast. And this is pretty similar to that. It's a little lighter. It's got maybe a smidge less brown in it as I look at them up close. And Natural Blush might actually have just a hint of sheen to it, but like very hard to identify once it's finally on the lips. But this shade is just a teeny bit softer than that. Sometimes when you figure out you like something so much and then you look back at what else you have, it's like, oh, there's a reason. It was a lot like something else I liked. So we're going to go on top with the top coat now that this is all dried down. And you will notice some shine. Ooh, a little bit of that balm just kind of, we'll melt that in. <laughs> a little bit of the balm just wanted to come off there. Mmm feels so good once that's on. The feeling of dryness and tightness goes away. You have the look of just more shine on your lips. What do we think? Are we a fan of this look? I feel like I could do just a little more blush now that it's all said and done. Again, this is the Natural Shimmer shade. Just kind of right here on the apple. So pretty. Mm. These kits, I was just really compelled to test them out, see what kind of look they came together to give, and if anything was really, really outstanding. I think my favorite parts of both kits are probably the blushes and um, the lip colors. The eyeshadow is kind of like, eh, they're throwing you a bone to complete the look, and mink is fine. That was fine for a very low fuss look yesterday, and this bedazzled biscotti, you know, it's got a little bit of a sparkle in it, which I do not love, but it could still become a, a functional shape shade for you. You know, it does work. It does show. But like I said earlier, I'm about certain these um, nude outlast shades are available individually, and so is everything here. You know, the blushes, whatever, so you can kind of pick and choose what interests you most. But I'm trying to think which overall look I prefer. This one goes just a little deeper on the lip. It's really, really hard for me to choose because when I came away from the pink look yesterday, like, I just, you know, I glanced at myself in the mirror. I thought it was an overall very soft look, yet I felt very very confident in it. You know what I mean? I had good coverage on my skin underneath everything and I just kind of loved how that lip color and the blush really played off of one another and once that highlight was on there too, like I really liked the look. And here I think I may actually enjoy this lip color just a little bit better and I do love this blush also. I honestly really like them both. I would say maybe looking at overall what would work with pretty much any look I wear. I feel like this lip color and this blush, I mean, it is called universal, and I could see that really playing itself out to be true. When you're playing with different eye looks, maybe doing something more dramatic on the eyes, I feel like this is a kind of blush that would probably always work, and a lot of times this lip color would probably work for me too. So this may be the tip top pick, but the medium cool is not far behind at all. It says $20 value on these. It was a little less than $20 to purchase them at Walgreens where I found them. A few other color combos available as well. And it was all according to undertone and skin tone. And right here is where they will tell you what you've picked. It's nowhere else on the packaging, but just the name of the Outlast is kind of the theme of the box. So let me know if you've tried any of these. Is this the kind of look you would go for just for everyday wear, easy makeup? Let's chat about it in the comments section. And thank you guys so much for watching. Bye!